Hello to everyone, this is Mind Mastery, and today we want to take you on a journey of manifestation, mindfulness, and a better future. This video is for you if you're prepared to discover the mysteries of your mind and body and finally make good changes in your life. To ensure you don't miss any of our groundbreaking content, subscribe to our channel and turn on the notification bell before we start. Now let's begin. You express your gratitude after obtaining something or while receiving it. Therefore, the highest emotional receiving condition is appreciation. As a result, when you enter a state of thankfulness and open your heart, you will accept, believe, and succumb to the thoughts that correspond to that emotional state, which will change how your autonomic nervous system is wired. You might assert that you are healthy, wealthy, and free forever, but your body has been conditioned by suffering, and it is telling you that you are not. At the brain stem, that notion also comes to an end. It never reaches the body since it is operating on a different program. In turn, once people begin to trade that and begin to open their hearts, the person's immune system becomes 50% stronger, and in just three days, they begin producing 50% more immunoglobulins, the body's natural protection against viruses and bacteria. This is according to one study. As a result, the body is switched from being told it is in the environment where it already occurred. The miracles begin to occur at that point. People start claiming, I'm doing nothing. At that point, you're not, of course, you don't possess. People create matter to matter. Therefore, the more you are affected internally by stress chemicals, the more transformed you are outside. Your focus becomes more focused as a result of the adrenaline rush. We become materialists as our senses are stimulated. Our focus is now solely on our bodies, the surroundings, and the time. We're now completely submerged in the VR experience of three-dimensional reality. Nothing is as distinct as it seems. As a result, there is time and distance between you and I. I am here. Next, there is me in this place and my dreams. They were far away from me. Why do I put them there for the future? I'm estimating how much I'll have to work, save and do in order to buy that house and that automobile, as well as how much overtime I'll have to put in. What I have to do to get it right, regardless of how I have to lie, steal, rob, or cheat matters, attempting to modify the world. Therefore, experience more distance when it doesn't happen. We strive harder. All of that is done by force, prayer, and control. Therefore, creating from the field rather than from matter means that you must remove all of your attention from your body, all of your attention from all of the people in your life, all of your attention from all of the objects and things, all of the places, and finally, all of your attention from time itself, and become nobody, no one, no thing, nowhere, and no time. What are you then, if not any of those things, the awareness you have? And now you are freed from the laws of three-dimensional reality where everything requires effort and time to achieve. And when we produce from the field rather than from matter, because the field is essentially what creates matter rather than matter producing the field. Adjust the field. Currently, you alter the situation. It takes a lot of practice to get good at this. You can't just take one bite. So after performing this correctly with a coherent heart and brain, you had a Wi-Fi signal. Additionally, if you are generating from this field rather than from matter, you are not need to travel any place in order to obtain your goals. Why would you, if you were aware of and linked to the quantum field, also known as the unified field, that connects all things material and physical, and if you were connected to source as a result, what would you need to go obtain if you were the source? you call it to yourself. Therefore, the intent is the thought-coherent brain. The electric charge is the cause. Motion and elevation, there is a magnetic signature of the heart. The magnetic charge and thought are what are causing the signal to be sent. It is a request. The emotions bring the incident back. Create that combo and you'll collapse space and time while also attracting those synchronicities to you. I am now experiencing this lifetime. I'm really clear about wanting to master that because I don't want to, I want to become proficient at that. I handled the other tasks. The alternative path to achievement is possible, but you're too worn out. It requires too much effort. Instead of being surprised by how well this stuff works, I would rather coordinate my energy with synchronicities in my life. Every time a synchronicity occurs and knocks you for a loop, it fills you with delight, amazement, and astonishment. You'll utilize that energy to create the next one. Regardless matter whether your thinking was motivated by feelings of rage, despair, inspiration, joy, or even sexual arousal, it caused a physical change in you. You've evolved. As you view this video while sitting comfortably and not moving a muscle, all thoughts, I can't, I'm not good enough, or I love you, 
have the same measured impact. Keep in mind that your most recent thought has caused a variety of dynamic changes to occur throughout your body. Did you know that your adrenal glands and pancreas are working overtime to secrete a few new hormones all of a sudden? Different parts of your brain suddenly surged with more electrical current, producing a swarm of neurochemicals too numerous to name your spleen and thymus. It was like a lightning storm. A group email was sent by gland. Several adjustments should be made to your immune system. Gastric fluids began to flow in a variety of directions. Enzymes that had been absent just moments earlier started to be processed by your liver. The blood flow to the capillaries in your hands and feet changed, your lungs stroke volume changed, and your heart rate changed, all just by thinking. Just one idea, but you are that strong. How are you able to accomplish all of those tasks? We can all intellectually comprehend that the brain controls and manages a wide range of bodily activities. But to what extent are we accountable for the work that our brains do? Whether we like it or not, it's a part of the body. After an idea has occurred in the brain, nothing else matters. Behind our awareness, everybody responds that results from either conscious or unintentional thinking happens. When it comes down to it, it is shocking to discover how significant and pervasive the consequences of a single or a few conscious or unconscious ideas may be. For instance, is it possible that the seemingly unconscious thoughts that recur every day and constantly in our minds set off a chain of physiological processes that results in both what we feel and how we feel? Except that the long-term impacts of our repetitive thinking might actually be what propels our body into an unbalanced condition or what we refer to as sickness. Is it possible that our constant thoughts and behaviors are teaching our bodies to be unhealthy? What if we often push our body's internal chemistry beyond of its normal range merely by thinking, to the point where the body's self-regulation system finally redefines these abnormal states as normal, regular ones? It is a delicate process. But it's possible that up until now we simply didn't pay it much attention. I want you to pay attention, wake up, and listen now that we're talking about attention. You modified your brain by deciding to alter your consciousness. In addition to altering how your brain was functioning only seconds earlier, you may have also altered how it will function going forward, maybe for the rest of your life, as you turn back to the words in this video. You changed how your brain's various regions received blood flow. Additionally, you trigger a series of impulses that reroute and alter electrical currents to various parts of the brain at the microscopic level. Your change in focus caused a plethora of various nerve cells to chemically band together to grasp hands and communicate in order to build better long-term bonds with one another. You shifted your attention and in doing so you altered your thoughts. Humans have the innate capacity to concentrate their attention on anything, as demonstrated by the fact that they can learn where, how, and what to focus their attention on, ultimately determines who we are neurologically. Why is it so difficult to focus on concepts that could benefit us right now if our awareness is so mobile, your back ache? The argument you had with your employer earlier today, and perhaps even your gender, may have been forgotten as you continued to focus. Where and what we focus our attention on determines the exact trajectory of our state of being. For instance, we can think of a painful memory from the past that is only imprinted in the hidden crevices of our gray matter at any time, and as if by magic, it will suddenly spring to life. We also have the choice of taking care of fears and anxieties that will arise in the future, but are not immediately present. They are real to us, though. Believe it or not, everything comes to life through our attention and becomes real that which was previously invisible or unreal. According to neuroscience, focusing on physical pain causes it to occur because doing so causes the brain's circuits that feel pain to electrically engage. If we then focus our whole attention on anything else, the pain perceiving circuits will deactivate. Pain can be eliminated by physically turning off the brain circuits responsible for processing it and other physiological feelings. However, when we check to see if the pain has completely subsided, the associated brain circuits reactivate, making us feel the ache once more. Furthermore, the connections between these brain circuits strengthen if they are activated regularly. By doing this, you can pay daily attention to suffering because the brain circuits involved in pain perception become more active we are neurologically wiring ourselves to grow a more acute awareness of that sensation. 